Over the years, I have tested a number of different clone video game systems, whether we're talking about for the NES, the Super NES, or the Sega Genesis. They just, they're really interesting to me. It's, it's interesting to see how different companies reimagine what was done close to 30 years ago, close to 40 years ago, in some instances, to try to bring those consoles and games from the past into the present. And one of the main features is to try to be able to hook up those systems to a modern flat panel TV. Now, I do have my Super NES playing behind me here, but to get this great of a picture, well, we went through an HD retrovision set of component video cables. I RGB modded the system itself, going through a RetroTINK 5X. It's about $400 invested in one system to be able to make it look this good. Now, a number of companies have come out with different clone systems, and we're gonna look at one today that, well, let's just say I've been critical of in the past. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out our unboxing video that we have here today. I really do appreciate it. What I wanna know from you here today, down in the comments section. So, like I mentioned, we do have Yoshi's Island playing behind me. How many of you are fans of this game? I know the crying Mario drives people nuts. But if you can get past that, this is an amazing game. Something that I slept on back in the day, and it's not one of my favorite games on the system. So recently I heard about this guy here. This is the Classic 3 clone console from Old School Gaming. And when I heard about it, I reached out to them to check and see if we could get a sample for review, and unfortunately they never got back to us. Fortunately, however, our good friend Adrian over at Live Action Games ordered one of these for me and I did pick it up. Now, it does feature four system compatibility right out of the box. And you're like, Gary, it says Classic 3. It's three, right? Four. NES, Sega Genesis, and Super NES, right? Well, technically, five systems because it'll do the Mega Drive and it'll do the Super Famicom. No adapters needed. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go through and just unbox this. Why is it just an unboxing? Well, I will admit I have filmed a full-blown review of this. It's over half an hour with the unboxing. So we are gonna pull the unboxing out. This is gonna just feature the hardware and then we're gonna do a separate video coming up in the next couple of days following this episode being uploaded that we're gonna feature just gameplay on. And then we're also going to do a super episode that will have basically the unboxing along with the gameplay all in one. But this, we're just gonna take a look at the hardware. Now, like I mentioned, out of the box, NES, Super NES, Super Famicom, Genesis, Mega Drive. It'll also handle PAL and NTSC games as well. So it has even more systems compatible with it too. Let's go ahead, let's take a closer look on the photo bench. So here you can see we have the Classic 3 HD up on the photo bench. It is a big box, which is why you're seeing a lot of the outside part of the, uh, the photo booth here. So it is HD 720p, has aspect ratio and region switches, includes two controllers, plays NES, Super NES, and Genesis, and it has both AV and HD output. Uh, on the back kind of walks you through everything here. The Classic 3 lets you play your NES, Super NES, and Genesis cartridges all in one super rad console. The Classic 3 comes with two uniquely designed ergonomic controllers. If you're a creature of habit, you can plug in your original controllers as well, which is cool. Uh, see your games like you've never seen them before. The Classic 3 can be connected using the included AV cables for, you know, if you want to use it with the CRT, no. Uh, or the included HD cables to play in full 720p HD. Want to play games from different regions? We've got you covered. Play all your cartridges from any regions. There's also an aspect ratio switch for 4x3 or 16x9. Uh, with all these features and more, the Classic 3 can handle all the retro goodness you throw at it. And again, supports original game cartridges compatible with original controllers. Compatible with homebrew games. I like the fact they're spelling that out. That's a good thing. Most systems will be. The fact that this actually calls it out good on them includes two controllers, AC adapter, AV, and HD cables are all included. Aspect ratio and region switches are also included as well. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our handy dandy X-Acto knife and open this up. So it does have like a plastic tray over the top of everything to keep everything in place in shipment. That's a nice touch. So here is the system itself. Now one of the really unique things that they've done and there are other systems that have, you know, the, the three 
system compatibility is the fact that they have color coded the game trays for lack of a better word. So, you know, the NES is one color, the Super NES is another, and the Genesis is another. So, there you can take a look at the system itself and you can see the, you know, NES is red, Super NES is purple, Genesis is blue. Chunky power button. Uh, so basically, first position is Genesis, second is Super NES, third is NES. I know others have done where you set your slide switch position on here and then you just hit a power button separately. Uh, reset button is a push in on the face of the unit itself. I, we'll go over this here in a minute, but that's the system itself. Does have an instruction manual that comes with it. Comes with two controllers, and like I say, they look like they are definitely inspired by the Genesis. We'll take a closer look. HDMI cable included, although they just call it HD cable. Uh, and it has a stereo AV cable included. So real quick, why they call it HD and not HDMI? HDMI is a licensed branding essentially or certification so uh, that's why um, you know if if products use bluetooth you have to pay for that bluetooth certification uh, you have a micro usb power cable here it looks like yep and your power brick itself let's see what the settings on this are probably five volt one amp five volt two thousand milliamps so beefy little ac adapter Let's get this out of the way and give you a closer look. So again, taking a closer look at the unit itself. Super NES, NES, and Genesis style um, uh, controller ports here. And basically the switch will take you back and forth between just using the Super NES style controller or NES, Super NES, and Genesis here. That's what that, that slide switch or toggle basically does. Now on the bottom here, you do have a PAL or NTSC switch. One thing that for me is a little troubling, let's give you a closer look at this. Out of the box, it's set to the PAL position. Um, being sold here in the US, this needs to be set to NTSC. And for gamers who get this and open it up and don't even know to look for that, um, that's really a big mistake, uh, in, at least in my belief from old school, that you know this needs to be set out of the box to NTSC. That's where their, their customers are based and everything. It's primarily a US-based product, so uh, I would really like to see them address that with their vendor that it is set to NTSC out of the box. Looking at the back of the system itself, you do have micro USB for power input. Not a fan of that. I would rather see USB-C. We're far enough along that these consoles should be including USB-C. I'll be honest, I don't know that any manufacturer has done that to this point, so it's not just on them, but I would like to see USB-C. Uh, audio left, right, and video output on the back. Uh, if you do want to use the RCA jacks, there's your HDMI. You can turn the LED on or off, so I've got to assume that's got to be for that there. Um, it does have a switch for, looks like uh, NTSC-U and NTSC-J. P slash N, we'll have to check uh, uh, what that is, and then looks like this one here is your aspect ratio switch. So overall, I mean, it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel cheap in the hands. The, the molded composites feel decent. So I do want to check and see what it feels like to actually put a cartridge into each of those slots, and I've grabbed just a couple random games. I mean, you don't get much more random than Nigel Mansell's IndyCar uh, into the Genesis. Went in smoothly, but oh man. Wow. Oh my goodness. That is a tight fit on the Genesis side. And yes, went in smoothly. A little bit better, but still, it is a tight grip. I would say real tight, tight-ish, tight. Um, they are all tight fits on the pins, which is, especially on that Genesis side, that is concerning to, to see how tight that fits. Now, let's set that aside. Let's take a look at the controller here. Because this is, like I say, it's definitely inspired, I think, by the six button Genesis controller. Um, but it's, it's definitely unique into itself. Now it does have a NS, uh, so probably Nintendo Sega on the back here. 
you know, I was not liking how it looked. It's not terrible. I gotta say, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, it, it's not as good as, as a Genesis controller. It just isn't. It's not as good as a Super NES controller. Um, D-pad feels okay. Buttons feel pretty plasticky. I'm, I'm not a fan of these shoulder buttons, I'll tell you that right now. Um, from a grip standpoint, it's actually not bad. Um, your fingers fall right into place down in here to, to kind of hold it. It's usable. I mean, that's, that's, you know, the best I can say about it. And let's check the connector port here too to, to see how tight that is. It's, it's decent. Um, not overly tight, not overly loose. I mean, not a major issue, I would say. So there you have a look at the hardware of the old school Classic 3. And what do I think of it just at a very surface level? Well, first and foremost, I didn't show this on the bench, but the LEDs, actually a pretty nice touch. I do like the fact that you can turn them off if you want to as well. The thing I don't like is I wish that the LEDs were controlled by the main power switch on the unit. Like this is turned off completely right now. The LEDs are still lit to turn them off. I have to actually reach behind here and go ahead and switch them off. Um, I was a bit disappointed too that it did come out of the box with the NTSC PAL switch for Super Nintendo set in the PAL location. That is something that really should not happen for something that's being shipped primarily here in the US, like I mentioned in the unboxing, that needs to be set to NTSC for the US uh, users essentially. The controller, I, hated the controller when I saw it on the box and when I saw examples of it. It's not bad. It, it actually really isn't. Um, I kind of wish they would bypass the A and B, basically the icons on the button itself, because this should be B, this should be A for NES games. Now, I can go ahead and use NES Genesis Super NES controllers with this. That, that is one of the nice features on the system. To go back and forth, you just flip that switch in front. If you're going to use this controller, you have the switch in the left position, and if you're gonna use OEM or original controllers or even wireless controllers from like Retro Fighters or anything along those lines, you switch into the other position. Um, this isn't bad. It is pretty lightweight. I do like the fact that on the back that it has the N and S switch so that I can go ahead and change the position. So I don't like the, you know, X and A configuration for playing NES games. Being able to use the A and B, even though they're backwards, is better for me. Um, I was a bit surprised at the power output of the AC adapter. A two amp output is pretty significant. This is actually right now, um, I was actually testing it, powering it off of my switch dock and it did that without a problem. The final thing I am going to say about it too is, well, two final things. First and foremost, I would really love to see manufacturers start going USB-C for power. It's just a more durable connection and in our full-blown review, you'll see why I may have had some additional issues with the micro USB on here. Finally, I thought the cartridge slots were okay going in, but man, they had a very firm grip coming out, specifically the Genesis side of this. Didn't notice it as much on the Super NES and on the NES side, but that Genesis cartridge slot, pretty tight. So um, something I am hoping will free up over time but it is something that I am a little bit concerned with. So uh, this is, like I mentioned, just our unboxing. I will have a link coming up once we do have it posted to our full-blown review and then the mega episode that has this unboxing plus that full-blown review. Now, if you do want a sneak peek at some of the performance that this system has in it, I will have links to our Classic 2 HD and Classic HD episodes coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos.
You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Production swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk, and Twitter at rocksolidstudios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.